You are blessed this morning. I said you are blessed this morning. Praise the Lord. Say, Lord Jesus, save my soul. Say, Holy Ghost, save my soul. Transform my life. Deepen my understanding. Stir my faith. Let your wonders, let your miracles, let your signs manifest in my life. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Last week I quoted a scripture. Say that let nobody judge you. Colossians chapter 2 verse 16. Let nobody judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holiday or of the new moon or of the Sabbath day. All these things are shadows of things, the real things that are yet to come. But the reality is in Christ Jesus. Let no man judge you. Let no man judge you. People have ways of saying things to make you feel guilty. They have ways of saying some things to make you feel guilty. To make you feel disqualified. To make you feel unaccepted. Hallelujah. They said because you are not worshipping God on this day, you are not of God. Because They said because you are not wearing this collar, you are not of God. Because you don't come from here, you are not of God. Jesus said, let no man judge you. Am I talking to somebody? Because you are eating snake, you are not of God. Because you are eating double-double, you are not of God. He said, let nobody judge you. And more being boo a And more being you a ten. Now, stand your way now, and your shadows. Amen. Those things that God gave them in the Old Testament, they were hot. Shadows. They were not the real thing. He said the real thing. Verse 17. The real thing is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the real thing. What matters is your link with Jesus. What matters is what? Your link with Jesus. When you have Jesus, you are acceptable in the sight of God. When you have Jesus, you are qualified before God. God. When you have Jesus, you are sanctified before God. When you have Jesus, the Bible says that Jesus is our sanctification. He is our wisdom. He is our righteousness. It is Jesus that makes you acceptable. Make sure your link with Jesus Christ is correct. Make sure your link with Jesus Christ, your relationship with Jesus Christ is intact. It's very, very important. Without Christ, you are disqualified. Say, I receive grace <laughs> to be connected to Jesus. Say it again. Say, I receive grace uh, to be connected uh, to Jesus Christ. Uh, hallelujah. Teba availability is greater than ability. Tell another person, availability is greater than ability. Ask your neighbor, how available are you to God? Ask another person, how available are you to God? Praise God. So in the sight of God, he's looking for available vessels. If God is looking for you and he cannot get you, you have lost value in his sight. If he's looking for you and he cannot get you, you are not available. It means you are not useful. Praise God. He's looking for you, for you to do something for him. You are not there. You are not there. And you are somewhere. He will take another person. Am I talking to somebody at all? So if you have a business, if you have a business, and you have, you, you have employed people in the business, and then you are looking for so-so and so employee, anytime you are looking for him, he's not there. You are looking for him, he's not there. What will you do to him? You will sack him. Am I talking to somebody? May the Lord not sack you in the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord not disqualify you in the name of Jesus. May the Lord not remove you in the name of Jesus Christ. So availability is greater than ability. So some people think they are qualified. Some people think they are competent. So they bluff God. They bluff God. So as they are bluffing God, God will go and look for a wee smoker. As they are bluffing God, 
God will look, go and look for a prostitute. As they are look, as they are bluffing God, God is looking for them and he's not finding them. God will go and look for occurring Seni. As they are bluffing God, God will go and look for arm robber and you take the arm robber and you clean the arm robber and you put his oil upon the arm robber you put his grace upon the arm robber and you begin to use him am i talking to somebody at all may the lord not replace you in the name of jesus i said may the lord not replace you in the name of jesus christ so availability is greater than ability if you come to church every sunday and i am not here you come to church every Sunday and I am not here. What am I doing? I am losing my place. And I'm disqualifying myself. Because anytime you come I am not here, somebody else will, will, will play my role. Somebody else will play my role. Somebody else will play my role. Three months I am not here. Six months I am not here. What, what has happened to me? I have been replaced. I am no longer needed. I have been disposed of. So make yourself irreplaceable in the sight of God. Make yourself what? Irreplaceable. That anytime he is looking for you to do something for him, he will be there. Because when he's looking for you and he doesn't get you, you will get another person and use the person. That is how people are replaced. That is how people are disposed of. The people that were qualified, the people that were educated, the people that were trained for God to use them, they were bluffing God. They thought God doesn't have anybody. And God started replacing them. Amen. That is why Wednesday, I shall be here. Friday, I shall be here. Sunday, I shall be here. Any other day, I shall be here. I am telling God, I day for you. You too, you must tell God, I day for you. Am I talking to somebody at all? So, so there are many people who think they are competent, but God has disqualified them because they are not available. Availability. You see, somebody may not know anything. He's an ignorant person. Ignoramus. But when the person is available, you can equip the person. You can train the person. You can give him the skill. And the person will become an expert. All you need is availability. Unimyo, unimyo, avail yourself to God. Am I talking to somebody at all? Yes. When I was in the dome, there were some counselors there in the dome who, who felt big. They felt big because they have been seeing small, small visions. So they, they said they are prophets. They have been seeing small, small visions. So when the new members come, they take the new members to them and they teach them the members and because the members are new the members esteem them very high so they think they are something when in actual fact they are small so they started feeling big and then people were hailing them prophet prophet people were hailing them so they did not submit themselves to the leadership of the church so they felt big but there were some people in the church who saw it as an opportunity to do something for God when they see the opportunity, they jump at it. When they see the opportunity, they jump at it. They see the opportunity and they jump at this. So all those nobodies who were jumping at opportunities, they started rising. They started rising. They started rising. And then departmental heads were taking their names to the archbishop. So when the archbishop asked questions, I need some committed people. I need some dedicated people. Heads of department who are seeing things. They say, this guy is committed. This guy is available. This guy is punctual. This guy is reliable. So before they realize, the archbishop, who doesn't know what is happening in the church, am I talking to somebody? He has ordained somebody a deacon. He has ordained somebody an elder. He has made somebody a pastor. And all the big, big, big guys, they are still there. Because they were not available. Am I talking to somebody at all? <laughs> I said, am I talking to somebody at all? Because nature abhors vacuum. Nature abhors vacuum. When you leave the space, another creature will fill the space. You will be automatically replaced. I pray for you again. 
every space that God has reserved for you, every seat that God has reserved for you, every glory that God has reserved for you, I pray for you. May you occupy it. I pray for you. May you occupy it. I pray for you. May you occupy it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. The space you occupy in God may may it be a real space that God has given to you. May it not be a space that human beings have given to you. Am I talking to somebody? Because many of us, the space we occupy in God was, is, is a space that human beings have given to us because they like us. Because they like our face. It's not because God is pleased with us. It's not because we are dedicated to God. It's not because we have a heart for God. It is somebody that wants to do you good. And so he gives you long service, long year service award. Then he gives you the space. But it must be because God sees you. And God sees the kind of heart you have for him. The kind of zeal and dedication you have for him. And then he gives you that space. That one is an endorsement from heaven. That one is what? An endorsement from heaven. So I've been telling you, there is nothing in the apostle, there is nothing in pastor, there is nothing in reverend. What matters is your contribution to the interest of God. Your contribution, your investment to the interest of God. What are you contributing to the interest of God? Emilia, Emilia, you are smiling. What are you contributing to the interest of God? Am I talking to somebody? I said, well, there is nothing in apostle. There is nothing in it. If you are an apostle and you are not contributing anything to the lives of the people of God, you are not doing anything to promote the interest of God, your apostleship is empty. So it is what you carry, not the position you occupy. What you are delivering, what you are offering. Tell yourself that me, I will count when it comes to the things of God. I will count. I want to matter. I want to count. I don't want to just be part of the numbers. When they are counting, I am just part of the numbers. Am I talking to somebody? But the day that you are not around, God must look for you. Where is that guy? Where is that guy? That guy who makes sure that <laughs> the people in my house, <laughs> they are happy. Where is that lady? She knows how to raise the, the right songs that melt me. Eh? Where is that lady? Where is that lady? Today I haven't seen her. Then they will say she is sick. God said, sick for what? Sickness. Aspire. Bring my daughter. Let her come and sing. And let me be melted and released for my people. Am I talking to somebody at all? Yes. When you are not there, God should be able to ah, where is that lady that I've been encouraging people in my house? That I've been reviving people in my house. That I've been staring. God, God, God begins to look for you. God begins to look for you. And you ask the angel, where is she? Where is she? Angels will come and look for you. <laughs> I said, angels will come and look for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Rabado Today can I preach? One day a certain bishop came with money. To come and steal me from Perez. <laughs> he came from America. I was by then a prayer warrior. Very zealous. I wanted to do something for God. He came from America and he used money to tease me. And he was taking me from Perez. Hey! Then I wrote a letter to the Archbishop. Release me. Archbishop, you're for where? You are not going anywhere. I have plans for that boy. That boy is going to mess up. I have plans for him. Call him for me. Call him for me. May God ask angels to call you. I said, may God ask angels to call you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because when I was there, I was very zealous. I was so jealous. Intercession must not suffer. The work of God must not suffer when we are around. Amen. Yes. But there were some of my prayer warrior colleagues who wrote letters before they even brought the letters, Archbishop has released them already. He didn't even say that. He just released them. Because, because no commitment, no dedication, no zeal. They are not, they are not like assets. They are, they, they are rather frustrating the work of God. Am I talking to somebody? He said, call me that boy. 
these were the expressions the archbishop used call me the boy he is going to mess up where is he going when i have plans for him when i have plans for him may god have a plan for you i said may god have a plan for you in the name of jesus when the spirit of death is coming to take you before your time god will look at death in the face and say who see then disappear expire clear in the name of jesus receive long life receive long life receive protection receive preservation receive establishment in the name of jesus i said you will matter i said you will matter i said you will matter your value shall increase in the sight of god in the name of jesus christ what are you talking about praise god applause from men is not enough i said what applause from men is not enough i must occupy a special place in the heart of god he said about king david he is a man after my own heart. There were kings, so there were many kings. He never said that about them. But he said, This guy called David, Odamakumaso, Odamakumaso, because he was a guy that risked his life for my name's sake. He risked his life. He risked his life for my sake. When all others were relaxed and sitting on the fence, that he risked his life he put his own life into his hand and jeopardized it in order to rescue my name and prevent my name from being shamified and reproached may the lord make you makuma mutofe i said may the lord say in the name of jesus christ so in your own small way tell yourself i will do this for god i will do that for god in your own small way decide it i said what decide it make yourself matter Amen. Today I'm talking about holiness. Hello, my friend. I hope that that message has blessed your life. It has lifted your faith like never before. I want to take this opportunity to lead you to Christ. I want you to give your heart to the Lord. So wherever you are watching from, pray this prayer with me right now. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for your love. Lord Jesus, you died for me. You rose for me. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your precious blood. Come into my heart. Be my Lord, my Savior, and my Master. Make my life a testimony to all who know me. Thank you, mighty God, for answering my prayer. Amen and amen. I also want to pray for you if you are sick in any part of your body. God is going to heal you right now. That sickness doesn't belong to you. Jesus paid for it. Lay your hand where the sickness is. Stretch the other hand towards the screen as I pray for you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I take authority over every spirit of sickness and disease. I bind all those forces and I cast them out of your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases to be healed. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak over your life that be healed from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Amen and Amen. I want you to examine yourself. You will see that your sickness is healed. Send us your testimony and we are going to rejoice with you. You can also send us your prayer request. God bless you. Bye-bye. You can fellowship with us at the Parish Chapel International, Grace Cathedral, Tema Community One, Meridian, near the Tigo office this and every Sunday from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Wednesday from 5 30 p.m. to 7 30 p.m. on Friday 5 30 p.m. to 7 30 p.m. come and your life will never be the same see you there